Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Those of you that use On One probably know that it has masking. It has both layer masks and filter masks. And within those two masks is another type of mask that, in my opinion, isn't used that often but is very useful. That is a luminosity mask. And I'm going to demonstrate this today. Now we're going to work on this image. Now as far as this image is concerned, all I did to it is I went to the Transform tab of the Develop module and I straightened it, uh, the buildings a little bit. It was shot with a wide angle lens. I'll turn this off. And you can see how the buildings look like they're falling backwards. So I went and I straightened it a little bit and I cropped away the blank pixels. I also went to Lens Corrections and I just did the lens correction so it was shot with a Sigma 24-70 on a Sony a7R 4 so that's that. And I didn't do anything with detail. You can see that's turned completely off. And if I go to Tone and Color, you'll notice I didn't do anything here. And the reason why I didn't do anything here is I really like the sky right out of camera. I exposed for the sky. And if I come in and I open up the shadows to make the land area and the buildings brighter, I'm making the sky brighter as well. And I don't necessarily wanna do that. So I'm going to do all these tone adjustments in the effects module. And the reason why I want to do them there is because when I add a filter to affect the tone, I could use a mask so that filter will only affect the areas I want it to affect. Specifically, I'm going to use a luminosity mask. So we're going to go to the effects module and I'm going to go to add filter and I'm going to go to the tone enhancer filter. And here we have all these tone adjustments. Now again, I mentioned I want to open up the shadows and you can see here it's not quite as dramatic as the adjustment was in the develop module, but it still is affecting the sky. So I want to kind of mask this so that it only affects the buildings. I'm going to just so you could see, I'm going to do some more adjusting as well. So, so we're going to kind of open this up. I'm going to hold the J key in get a uh, white point and a black point. So I'm kind of adjusting these as I feel they should be adjusted. Okay, now, as far as that luminosity mask is concerned, if I go up here and I click on the little mask icon, I open up all the masking tools. And within is a button labeled Lumen, that's luminosity. So as soon as I click on it, what it will do is it will uh, apply a luminosity mask where the effect is only affecting the brighter parts of the image. You could see when I did that, it took the uh, adjustments I just did away from the darker parts of the image, the buildings. So it's opposite of what I want. Well, it's easy to fix that. We could just go to invert right here. And you could see now it's applied to the buildings and not as much to the sky. And it was very quick to do that. Now it is a being applied to the darkest parts of the sky and that isn't too bad. So I kind of like that better. Now any adjustments I continue to do within this tone enhancer filter will be applied mainly to the buildings and the water in the foreground. It won't be applied as much uh, to the sky. So if I come in and I want to add some detail and some clarity if I want to do anything with curves, it will mainly work then down here. All right, now I really don't like the sky as it is. I don't want to add any, you know, I don't want to make the blue darker or more saturated, but the grass and the trees and the buildings, they're kind of flat. So I want to add um, something there to affect color. So I'm going to go to a add filter and I'm going to go to a color enhancer filter. And with this color enhancer filter, I could just come in like and let's say move saturation up. But when I do that, it's affecting the sky again. I don't want to affect the sky just like before. So if I like pull up saturation, let's say, let me temporarily close down that color enhancer filter and go back to the tone enhancer filter. I could copy this luminosity mask. So click on the copy button, go back up to the color enhancer, uh, filter, open up masking, and then paste it. So it'll remove the effect mainly from the sky, but you could see I said mainly, and I said mainly several times when I was working on the tone, it's still 
affecting the sky a little bit too much. This is where these adjustments down here come in and we could try to limit it so it's just affecting the land and the buildings and the water, not the sky. So just come in and start kind of moving around and you'll see now how I'm removing it pretty much from the sky. When I move these three towards the darker area of this line, you can see it starts out at absolute black on the far left and absolute white at the far right and all the shades of gray in between. And if you look at this little postage stamp right here, you can see wherever it's white, that is where the um, mask is being applied. So meaning the adjustments are being applied there. Where it's black, the adjustments aren't being applied. So they're not being applied as much to the sky, a tiny bit at the very top here, right? I can come in and just keep readjusting and kind of looking at that postage stamp. I could click on view mask, but overall that doesn't always give a really good rendition of what the mask is actually doing when you're using a luminosity mask. What you can do is you could go up to mask, view mode, and look at grayscale. Sometimes that is a little better. And you could see then uh, wherever the white is, is where the adjustments are being applied and wherever the black is, they're not being applied. So this gives you a little better look. And you also, you could always come in here and you could just get a mask brush, right? And you could go up and make sure you're painting out the adjustment and come up here and just paint out the adjustment in these areas where you don't want it to affect. So you could come in and manually add to your luminosity mask or in this case, take away from the luminosity mask. So I'm just gonna do it like that for now. That's good enough for this video, gives you an idea. So I'm gonna turn off the mask. So I'll come out, or the view of the mask, click on view again. I'm gonna get rid of this brush and go back to this little uh, magnifying glass icon. So now any adjustments I do with this color enhancer filter are mainly gonna affect the land. So I could come down here to color range and I could, let's say, go to yellow and I want to make the yellows of those trees brighter. You can see how it's affecting that. And uh, let's see, we could go to green and I could make maybe the greens a little brighter or a little darker, maybe a little darker, maybe a little more saturation there. And you could see how then we're affecting now a very specific part of the image. And we started out with that luminosity mask that we copied from the tone enhancer. And then we used a brush to remove it from areas where we absolutely positively don't want it to affect at all. So that's Luminosity Masks 101. They're also available in layers. So if you're adding a layer to your image, if you click, you know, in layer here, the layer icon, you could see there's lumen there. So if you're any, doing anything with layers, you also could utilize Luminosity Masks there as well. So um, that's it. That's a luminosity mask. And as I mentioned, I don't think it's used quite enough because it could save you a lot of time because you could come in with a brush and paint in everything and you could use the um, perfect brush to help you get around the buildings. But the luminosity mask will do the trick most of the time and you could just affect or move around the level sliders like I did on this mask and sometimes the window slider to help as well and it could get this mask to be applied exactly where you want it applied. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.